Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us this morning. The service is about to start, but if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can download our app, Two Trees Community, in your app store, and follow us on Instagram for updates on how to stay connected and get involved. We love you guys and hope you have an amazing Sunday. Well, hey, good morning, Two Trees Community Church. This morning, we're going to dive into the word with one another. We're going to worship with one another. But I just want to encourage you guys this morning, just look to Jesus. Close your eyes, soften your hearts, slow down what's going on around you. Maybe it's been a busy week, but just take the next few minutes just to breathe in. Just Jesus, just to worship him. Just take the few minutes just to settle down. Close your eyes. And just worship with your full hearts. Let's just look to God. Let's just praise Him for all He's worthy of. We just say this this morning. God, we're here for you. God, we want you to move. Lord, we need you to move. And God, we're grateful for your presence. We're grateful for your Holy Spirit, God. So this morning, come and move in the homes of people. Come and move in our city streets this morning. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.
doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. I don't know whoever's listening this morning, but I feel like God's just saying that he's breaking off shame. He's breaking the chains, even of generational curses and generational ties. But sometimes in moments, we just have to fully give our hearts to Jesus. We have to fully trust Jesus. And so as we continue to worship, I want to just encourage everyone that's listening and worshiping just to fully give their hearts to Jesus this morning. To fully let go and just surrender. Sometimes we don't know the answer, but it's really simple. It's just Jesus. It's just Jesus. So this morning, God, we just give you our full hearts. God, we give you our pasts. We give you our futures. We just invite you, God, here to come in and make all things new, Jesus. So come and consume me, my heart is ready, God if I burn, I'll burn for you, with no hesitation, with no reservation, and God if I burn, I'll burn for you. Let's just sing that again. My heart is ready, God, if I burn, I'll burn for you. With no hesitation. With no hesitation, with no reservation. And God, if I burn, I'll burn for you. Sing, give me a fresh fire. Give me a fresh, fresh fire. Me a fresh, fresh fire. I want what you desire. I want to burn for you, God. Give me a fresh, fresh fire. Give me a fresh, fresh fire. I want what you desire. I want to burn. I want to burn for you. Fresh, fresh fire. I want a fresh, fresh fire. I want a fresh, fresh fire. I want to burn for you, God. So my heart is ready. So come and consume me. And God, if I burn, I'll burn for you with no hesitation. With no hesitation. No reservation, God. If I burn, I burn for you. As the Spirit was moving over the water, the Spirit come move over us. Right now, come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, the Spirit. Invite the Holy Spirit. Spirit was moving over the water. Spirit come move over us right here and now, God. Come rest on. Yeah. Come rest on. Spirit. Spirit was moving over the water. Spirit come move over us. Yeah. Come rest on. Let heaven on in. Come 
rest on off Ventura Avenue, God. Off the city of Ventura, God. We sing fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, lift it in all. So Jesus, this morning, Lord, we just pray that your Holy Spirit would fill in these streets, God, would fill in every single home, Lord, every single person that's watching, whether it's live or whether it's a few days, a few months, a few years later, God, I just pray that your Holy Spirit would just encounter people this morning. I just pray, God, that your Holy Spirit would encounter people, Lord, that they would encounter the might and the goodness of your love. Lord, I pray that you would just encourage people this morning just to reach out if they need help. God, I, I just pray, God, that you would encourage people to dive in, God, to not stay on the outside, God, but to dive into all that you have for them this morning. God, so we give you our full hearts. We run to you with everything you have. In Jesus' name, we all said, amen, amen. This morning, if you guys are with us, just feel free to reach out. Comment your name on the live chat here. Let us know who you are, even where you're watching from. We have leaders that are on the chat that would love to connect with you as well. As we transition here, I want you guys just to welcome our pastor, Pastor Brad. Good morning, YouTube. We're so happy you're here. Thank you for checking in on the online stream. There's a lot happening today. It's a big day, not only here with our online audience, but it's a big day for those of you who are ready for the Super Bowl. So uh, first, I want to congratulate you for taking time to get your spirit right if you're a football fan before you go into your Super Bowl party. Um, we're going to say, here's what we're going to say. We're going to say, uh, when it comes to the Super Bowl and you have to pick between the Chiefs and the Bucks, we're going to say we pick the Lakers, okay? Because this is definitely, if you're in California, this is not a very interesting Super Bowl. So, uh, but I would like to see Tom Brady just go uh, put his son, Patrick Mahomes, in time out for a while. It's not time. Let the goat do his business. So I'm asking for Tom Brady right now to step in. And uh, let's just go get that other Super Bowl. Let's go get it. I like to see history made. Let's get, I think it's ring seven. Let's go get it. So I'm actually going for the Bucks, And so that's my team. But thank you for being here. Don't turn me off today. Listen, God has a word for you. And if you're local today, actually, here's the only way I'm going to say, turn me off. If you're local today, you need to get yourself up off the couch and come out to San Buenaventura Park. It is honestly powerful. Week after week, we're seeing new faces. This church is so diverse and it's growing and it's just becoming such a family. So uh, we social distance. You can wear a mask. There's no... Um, I mean, just come on. God is out there. God is at work. We're seeing healings happen. We're seeing people walk off the bike path and receive the Lord. We're just seeing story after story of God's work out there. So if you're local right now, shut that laptop off, push that channel button, 
whatever, turn off your TV and let's get out and let's be live. You can always come back and watch this. So um, before I get into this, I'm going to pray over offering. If you'd like to be an investor in what God is doing in this ministry, I want you to know that we feel it, we see it, we value it. Every person, every penny that comes into this ministry is a, is a win for the gospel. We are giving everything we can give to get this facility on Ventura Avenue off the ground right now. And so uh, thank you. And if God lays it on your heart, I'm just going to trust him. No pressure. If you need something, contact us and we will help you. We're a giving ministry too. And so if you're out there and you have a real practical need, like maybe you need, uh, you know, you're struggling, you have no job or whatever, um, groceries, rent, whatever, talk to us. This is not just give to us and never see a return on it. We actually want to pour back out into you. So um, we're going to pray over the offering. The Bible says it's more blessed to give to, than to receive, and we're just going to trust him in that. So Holy Spirit, right now I ask you, to move through this online stream and cause people to have a desire to give what you want them to give. It's super simple. We're going to trust you. Lord, there's a big job on our hands here in Ventura. And Lord, you've promised to meet our need. You're our provider. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, got a lot to say. Uh, I was joking that I'm going to title this message Words from the Bible, but I'm not. We do have a specific talk this morning. I felt like as I was putting my notes together, it was kind of scattered. It's like a shotgun, but I'm hoping that the Holy Spirit will grab a hold of something and speak it into your heart, and hopefully it's relevant to you. We've been praying over this. We've had a really, really busy week as a ministry. We have had West Side council hearings over our, or meetings and presented our, um, our project here in the new facility. And so far, so good. Moving on to the next steps. It seems like uh, we are slowly but surely inching forward towards the day whenever we will be able to be here in person in our facility. But um, I had a random thought and I was remembering a conversation I had with a friend of mine who was uh, he, he believed in me and he was saying something and it, what he was saying, uh, I'm not sure uh, it really uh, hit me until way after the conversation, but uh, a friend of mine, another pastor, he told me, he said, Brad, if you would just teach the Bible and stop challenging people to be like Jesus, you would have a mega church. And I, I thought about that and I was like, you know, maybe, I mean, do I want that? Do I not? Where am I at? Um, but I, I was thinking this morning, there's a term for people that teach the Bible apart from Jesus. That term is Pharisee. And without getting too heavy too quick, I have to say what's on my heart. There are finely dressed, biblically literate people separated from Jesus for eternity right now. There are people who know their Bible looked really good on the outside, that died without knowing Jesus personally. Jesus said that there will be a day they'll come and they'll say, well, didn't I do this and didn't I do that? And he's going to say, but I don't know you. I don't know you. This is tough. This is super tough. The church can no longer be a trophy bride. We can't sit by his side, looking good, doing nothing anymore. Those days are done for us. They were buried in 2020. God is asking us to be a church that's okay with, our, with a stained dress because we've been on the battlefield. God is actually calling us to go and get our hands dirty. And right now the church is on house arrest and I'm grieved, I'm grieved. I, want, I don't care if you have to, if you're, if you're quarantined or you're social distancing or, and you don't feel comfortable going out, text people, call people, stay engaged. Don't disengage from the Great Commission because you are in a covenant with the creator of the Great Commission. So this is my challenge, church. You can't stand and do nothing. 
Right now, there's too much riding on this. God is raising up a bride that's willing to get in the trenches. You know, that's one of the things I say about Shanna. Shanna, um, as a pastor's wife, she's actually a pastor. She's a different form of a pastor, uh, you know, and does different roles in the church. But she's my battle partner. Like, this girl goes to war with me. I couldn't imagine being married to someone who wouldn't go to war with me. It would be hard. Um, but Shanna, she goes to the trenches with me. She goes into the deep places with me. And um, we do it together. This is a picture of what we're doing as the church with God in heaven. Now, I want to reframe the way you see circumstances and issues in your life today. Today, I want to give you a new perspective on people, on pain, on church. I want to give you a new perspective on leadership and transition. I think Christians are disappointed because we misunderstand the process. We see the kingdom through high-speed networks. And what happens is that we pray once and because things don't happen, we quit. We go after our dream for a short time and we experience some opposition. So we decide that maybe that dream's not from God and we abandon that dream. We read the Bible in a year on a daily Bible reading plan, but then we don't realize that what happened in the Bible actually was thousands and thousands of years of a story that had developed and uh, life had happened. There's hundreds of years in the Bible where they didn't have a prophet show up to give them a word. And we think things are supposed to happen overnight because we can flip from Genesis to Revelation and we think it's all solved. It's not. See today, what am I saying? We're going to go deeper. Today, if you throw a seed into the ground, tomorrow, you know what it's going to be? A seed in the ground. That's all it'll be. The recipe for growth is this. The soil is your heart, the Bible describes. Go read Matthew chapter 13. This soil has to be cultivated. Cultivated it, cultivating is an uncomfortable process. It involves trials sometimes. It involves difficulty sometimes. It, calls, it causes a breaking to happen sometimes, a circumcision of the heart to take place sometimes. Um, cultivating, it, it prepares the soil for what's going to be planted in it. I've got a word for somebody right now. You want to get out of your difficult situation and God is telling you today, do not eject from your trial. Let the work of God be done within the trial. Learn how to worship in the trial. Learn how to find Jesus in the season you're in. Because in these moments, this is when God opens our heart to new things. If you never experienced trials, a lot of times you would never leave the circumstance you're in. So God will actually use trials to transfer you. See, the next part of growth, and I'm going to roll through this, is your planting and watering. When you come to church, when you read your word, when someone calls you with that word from God or whatever it may be, these are seeds planted in the soil of your heart. And then when you continue coming to church, when you continue opening yourself up to the presence of Jesus, you, you turn on your Spotify, you get into worship, you begin to get into the presence. What happens? That's water being dumped on that seed. And then the next part of the step is the hardest because even when you begin to water it, God will cause growth in season. You could water today something that may not grow till next year. And if it's a, a very small seed in the beginning of something beautiful that God's doing, there's a chance you may only see small growth next year. It may take years to develop. See, sometimes we see people's lives, you know, even financially or whatever, we see where they're at and we're like, man, why don't I have that? And we live frustrated. And then we take it out on the people around us. Uh, maybe our career isn't developed or maybe our vision isn't developed. And we're like, why aren't I where they are? You don't realize it's taken years and years and years and years to get there. Our church, what you see today happening is San, Buen San Buenaventura State Park 
it's been years and years and years. I don't want to get into that yet, but years and years and years of developing a culture. Landon and I and uh, Shanna and Jemmy and Garrett Prudhomme and Nick and Julia Vallajos and many, many more. Monica and um, others who have come in and these are people who in the foundation of this church, and I know I'm forgetting people, so forgive me. I know I'm forgetting you. I got to move in. Um, these are people that saw this when we were standing there in a sanctuary with just a small group of people saying, God, you gave us a promise. What do we do? And then week after week, faithfulness, faithfulness, faithfulness. See, it's faithful, 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 fruitful. Um, promotion happens a few different ways in the kingdom. It can happen through the presence of God. God can call you into something, and that's a supernatural thing. I leave that to God. In the presence, he can just call someone's name and call them to a position. That's God's responsibility. That's not mine. But as far as for us, promotion happens through humility. When you humble yourself, sometimes God, always God will exalt you. And then when you're faithful with small things, he'll give you more. This is the promotion process. See, we've been deceived by our fire stick remotes because we can skip through what we want to miss and rewind what we want to watch again. We've become the God of our flat screen and it's given us unrealistic expectations about the circumstances we face. See, you can't fast forward the pain of a miscarriage. You can't skip through the shameful parts of your life when someone you love is trapped in an addiction. If you conceive a child today, practically today as a human being, it takes nine months. And then that baby is born. And how many of you know it's not just nine months and now you got a baby, it's ready to go. Then it's years of developing. It's 18 plus years. Uh, in 2021, it's like 38 years before they get out of the house. But, the, uh, but it takes time to develop children. But a seed, when it's planted... It's planted in the heart of a person and in the heart of soil and it's grown in darkness, grown in darkness. This week at our guys Bible study, we uh, were talking about uh, Moses and how he had blessed the children of Israel. And there's this point where Moses is about to die and before he dies, he gathers the people and he begins to bless all the tribes of Israel. This blessing's really cool. Um, was, it actually reminded me, it's like if somebody, to ex describe the blessing, like if someone wanted to marry my daughters, they could just go take them and marry them, I guess. But if they want what I have, they want my presence in their life, they're gonna probably have to come and get my blessing. See, Moses, when he blessed the children, it was him imparting the future into the children of God. He was actually giving them his inheritance. It had been passed down to him from others in the faith. But what was interesting about this is we went a little deeper. We discovered that this blessing, this act of blessing that we saw Moses before Joshua took them into the promised land, this act of blessing was actually the fulfillment of a prophecy given by Jacob. Check this out, Genesis 49, one and two. And by the way, for those of you who are Bible students, this is the first prophecy ever given by a man in the scriptures in Genesis 49. Before that, they were given by, uh, they were given by God. But he says, then Jacob summoned his sons and he says, assemble yourselves that I may tell you what may befall you in the days to come. Gather together and hear, O sons of Jacob, and listen to your father. See, these sons represented tribes. And I don't want to get into this, but I'm talking to somebody today, like the promise God gave you sometimes is for the people around you, it's for the people who come behind you. Sometimes you stepping into what God has for you is going to benefit your children and your children's children. So in order for you to pass this down, you have to receive it. 
But Jacob was prophesying and he told them, he said, here's what you're going to be. He went through each of them. He said, here's what you're going to be. Here's what you're going to do. Here's where you're going to live. Here's what will happen to your children. Here's some of the challenges you're going to endure. Um, and then after Jacob gives this prophecy, he dies and the children of Israel go into the Exodus story. The Exodus story is pure darkness for 400 years. They were enslaved. They were forced to do things they didn't want to do. They had dreams that were crushed. They passed on um, the bones of Joseph and said, hey, don't forget, one day we're coming out of this. And they passed on the promise and passed on the promise and passed on the promise. Until one day, a guy named Moses comes and says, in the name of God, Pharaoh, let my people go. Israel entered the process. This seed that was sown in darkness, it was that Israel went through our process with this seed. They were delivered. They were baptized as they crossed through the Red Sea. They spent way too much time circling in the wilderness. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but you spent way too much time wandering from church to church, wandering from ministry to ministry. Like figure out your passion and root yourself in it. Figure out your calling and root yourself in it. That's where growth takes place. And then Moses dies and they enter in. See, Jacob prophesied and Moses blessed. Jacob died, Israel went into darkness. Moses dies, and Israel goes into the promise. See, today I want to tell you, I'm going to give you something that's going to sound very dark. But you got to hear me in this, because I'm hoping that it, it encourages you. This is what you need to know if you're waiting on a promise today. I don't know who I'm talking to, but if you're waiting on a promise today, you need to listen in, write this down. Death is the invitation to the promise. Death is the invitation to the promise. Jacob died and Israel stepped into their journey. Moses died and Joshua went into Canaan. Jesus died and the spirit was released to humanity. The Holocaust happened for the nation of Israel and in a day, the state of Israel was born. What does this mean, Brad? This means this, that your promise is yes in him. Your new life will be built on the foundation of, a, of the graveyard of your past. Romans 6, 4, we have to hear this. I love this passage. We read this passage before we do baptisms usually. But Romans 6, 4, it says, Therefore, we have been buried with him. See, you go to the grave with him and you're resurrected with him. It says, we have been buried with him through baptism into death so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. See, what you want God to do is on the other side of your grave. I was thinking about my life and what's crazy is, I didn't see this life coming. When I met Shanna, um, I literally did not know how to be a Christian boyfriend or husband. I didn't get it. Um, I was a band guy. I was traveling. I was living a wholly different, whole different life. And I, I remember, because for some of you who don't know the story, it doesn't happen for everybody. In fact, I think I'm the only man on planet Earth that it happened to. But God told me I would marry Shanna before I met her. And I even told my friends I was at church with, the Holy Spirit supernaturally told me, that's going to be your wife. And I was like, whoa, okay. Um, and it was a process. We, did, we dated for two years. I never even actually told her. So for those of you who are like, man, I could use this to get a girlfriend, don't. Um, it doesn't work. I'm the only man in human history it happened to, okay? But I knew that Shanna was supposed to be my wife. I knew it. And then we started dating we got engaged, and um, I remember one moment where, like, I knew, like, I was going to have to be a husband. I was going to have to 
some point be a dad. But I remember thinking, I don't know how to do it. And I remember I was getting really itchy because I was thinking, I can't be that guy. I'm going to be vulnerable with you. I don't know how to have the family DNA. I think I have that piece missing. Um, I came to church. I went to Bible studies, go to Christian events, serve the poor, read my Bible. But I didn't know how to become that man. Um, And I remember a conversation with Shanna that still breaks my heart today. And I remember saying, if you're looking for the guy who's going to have the three kids, the dogs, the car, and the house, and the stability, that guy's not me. You need to go to someone else. Like, that's not me. And I tried to push her away. A lot of times when I see people reject other people, it's because we're afraid. And because we're not, a, I mean, getting vulnerable, it's going to open us up to be hurt. And I had never really learned how to be loved or how to love. And to be honest with you, no one had modeled what it meant to be a father. And so I didn't, that, it was all a mystery to me. And so I was content just being on the streets doing what I did. But I remember Shanna just gracefully, she just received it, she received it, she said, I love you. And I'm going in the trenches with you. And it moved me. It moved me. There, I, I remember going to God in that time and I was like, God, I would pray prayers like this. God, I actually can't do it. I actually can't do it. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I'm going to try to show you how to go from where you are to where God wants you to go. And I remember praying, God, I don't have the power. I can't do it. I don't know how to give myself fully to a person or give myself fully to a dream. I can't. Uh, I don't know what to do here. And uh, somehow God in that moment, almost like a kid with a broken leg, he sat me down in a wheelchair and he said, Brad, I don't need you to do anything. I need you to shut up, be still and sit down and I will take you to where you need to go. And I will put you with men who know how to model the faith. And I will put you in a ministry where they know how to go and heal those wounds. I will put you in a place where you're going to step into the promise of your heart, the desire of your heart. I'm going to put you in a place that you're going to see the abundant life that you're afraid of. And I promise you it's good. And when you let go of this old stuff, when you let go of those old friends, when you, when you release that old life and you get into that place, Brad, you're never going to wish you were there again. What I have for you tomorrow is going to be so much better than what you experienced yesterday. It'll be not even worth it to compare it. God, he said a transformation has to take place. But in yes, Brad, you can't do it. And I don't know who I'm talking to today, but you can't do it either. This is not like a self-help message. The gospel isn't like you're powerful enough on your own. That's humanism. That's secular humanism. The gospel says we are broken and we need Jesus. And when we get Jesus, we have everything we need. We have everything we need. And with him, we can do all things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me alone. See, God is not asking us to do something. God is asking us to become something. I didn't know how to plant roots. I didn't know how to work a nine to five. I didn't know how to love someone. I didn't know how to let my self-centered vision die. I didn't know how to be a parent. Um, And I'll be honest with you today. I have actually lost some things in the faith. I've lost friends. I've lost jobs. My passion has changed. I'm thinking about other people a whole lot more than I used to. My ego is dying a slow death. I don't need to be the center of attention. Um, And just because I'm on a stage with the microphone doesn't mean that I desire the stage above everything else. In fact, I'd burn down the stage if I had to surrender Jesus. Today, my life is completely different and it is the work of the Holy Spirit. It has nothing to do with human effort. It is God at work. And so those of you right now, you're saying, I can't become a Christian. Let's be real practical. Brad, I hear you, but I can't be a Christian. I'm going to tell you, you can, and it's not through your power, it's through his. All you have to do is surrender. When you surrender your life, God takes over. God takes over. You don't have to fight sin in your power. You can't do it. If you could beat sin in your strength, God wouldn't have had to send a savior. 
you know, this week, I've uh, been thinking about parenting a lot, and our girls, we're doing devos together. We're trying to get more discipline, so we do them in the mornings, Shannon and I, um, with them, and we, we bought them, like, little devotional books, and we read, and um, we're just realizing, like, these girls are watching us. Um, the other day, uh, from time to time, like, I'll take the girls, like, on daughter dates and stuff, but Drew, in particular, the other day, we're driving in the car, and I was listening to Kids Bop, and it was probably, I've been into pop music lately. I've kind of rejected hardcore, what I used to listen to. I was a rock guy, now I'm a pop guy because I have daughters. But we're listening to Kids Bop, and I found myself grooving. Can I embarrass myself with you guys real quick? So I was grooving like this, and I was like doing this, and I look over at Drew, and she was doing the same thing. She was watching me. And I was going, and I started to move it out, and she was going, that she was watching me, and then I started to sing, and she started to sing, and she's doing it, and I swear, Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, this one's watching what you do. It's interesting to me. So we do these devotions around the house. The other morning, I was getting ready to leave the table, and I had went and got my stuff ready for work. I, um, I went around, and I blessed the kids, like the Moses blessing. I bless the kids, and I go to them, and I'm like, in Jesus' name, this girl is more than a conqueror. First grade cannot handle her. Her, her test is going to be accomplished in Jesus' name. This girl is a light of the world, you know, on and on and on. These are the most amazing daughters on planet Earth, you know, and I just, I just like impart whatever's in here. I give it to them. I bless them. What was funny was Drew, I, I, I go and I bless Shanna, and Shanna sometimes rolls her eyes at me. Sometimes she receives it. I don't know. It just depends on what I'm saying and how annoying it is. But Drew, as I'm blessing the children, stands up on the chair and she says, and you are blessed and you are the best dad on planet Earth and the best pastor and you are going to have an amazing day. And I was like, oh my goodness. Like, this is joy. This is life. Um... I've got a word for somebody. This week, as I was thinking about our children, God gave me a word. He said, good parents will actually be okay with dying to their dreams so that they can live through their children's dreams. This does not mean like because you didn't make it for the high school football team, now you got to push your son to make it for the high school football team. That's not it. This means that you want to see a kingdom seed planted in the heart of your children. And you're actually okay. Like your dream becomes their dream. And when they step into it, it's just as though you step into it. I felt like what God was showing me. He said, Brad, this is what it's like whenever you step into your promise. He said, I'm actually dreaming through you. Such a cool moment. Drew on the way to jiu-jitsu the other day. She's doing jiu-jitsu. Um, it seems like we spend our whole life taking them to their things. If you're a parent of small kids, you get it. But uh, she asked me, she goes, Dad, what did you like to do? What did you used to like to do? And I said, well, I, liked, I used to like to do all kinds of things. I used to play music. I used to do this. I used to do that. This is not a message for me like to make you feel shame if you're a parent and you have hobbies. That's not it. This is a message about promise and it's a message about seeing it come through your kids. Um, but I said, you know, to be honest with you, I said, I like to watch you do what you do now. For me, that brings me joy. It's not about me being the center of attention. I don't need to be the person who's always doing it. I can get out of the way and let you do it now, Drew. She goes, you're a good dad. It was just the sweetest moment. I'm not saying this to build me up. I'm just saying this to say that God looks at you and he says, I want you to dream big dreams. And I'm going to plant these seeds in your heart and you're going to have to be converted and become like a child to receive it. And then you're going to have to trust me because I'm going to take you from where you are to where you're going, and sometimes it'll make sense, sometimes it won't. Sometimes you're going to want to eject, you're going to be frustrated, you're going to say, why God? You're going to say, where are you, God? You're going to say, when is it going to happen, God? 
But God says today, he says, let the process happen. Seeds are grown in darkness. Be a child and trust me. Let me be your dad. Let me take you where you need to go. Let me bring you to the place of peace. Um, And trust me for your provision. I hope this encouraged you today. For anyone who's struggling, please let us know. We love you like crazy. Um, And if you're local today, come out. 10 a.m. San Buenaventura State Park. Uh, also, check our app. We have adopt a block stuff happening and lots of outreach opportunities and connection opportunities. If you're a guy locally, we have guys' Bible studies in person happening. If you're a girl locally, we have girls' community groups happening. Um, if you're uh, a student, we have student groups meeting. Um, just connect, download our app, let us know how we can serve you, and let me pray. Father God, I pray over the seed that's planted in the heart of the people today. Lord, that that seed would grow in Jesus' name. I declare growth over every promise in every heart. Lord, and I declare peace over every person and every process. Lord, let us relax and move through the process. We're, a lot of us are frustrated because we misunderstand the process, God. We have to go through it, and it's season after season. And before you know it, you're going to be where you need to be doing what God has told you to do. So, Lord, bless your people. Give us a great day. If anyone wants to receive the Lord, contact us, message us, comment. We'll get back to you. Um, And, Lord, give us an amazing, amazing day with our family at the Super Bowl parties. And, Lord, let Tom Brady win today. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. I hope you have an amazing day. We'll see you out at the beach in person. God bless. Thanks for joining us today. If you haven't yet, hit subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our social media. We have Facebook and Instagram. Follow along with all of the things. And then also we have a Two Trees community app that you can download and check out different Bible studies and things we're doing during the week. Love you guys so much. Hope you have an incredible week. Be challenged and go out.